And I'd like to invite our board chair, Mr. Steve Sislav, to come down and do that. And he will um, ask you probably all to stand and I'll give it, I'll let him take it away. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Alex, appreciate it. Welcome, first off, can we get a round of applause for Alex? I mean, he does an incredible job. He does an incredible job with the county. We've got a few more county staff here. Sammy's in the back. Uh, you've met him. Right, give her a round of applause. Brian Paulson, who's our town manager in Laughlin, is in the back. And I don't know who all I, else I might be missing, but I, I want to make a point. I have, for those of you who I have not met, I'm Steve Sislak. I'm currently the chair of the Clark County Commission. I represent District A, which is in Southwest, and also Laughlin and Searchlight, a couple of our uh, elected town boards. We thank you for your willingness to serve. Uh, it's not always an easy job that you're undertaking. You will face some contentious issues in the years ahead of you. Uh, neighbors don't always agree with developers on what's going to happen on particular parcels. Sometimes neighbors don't agree with themselves on what's going to happen on particular parcels. You are our eyes and ears. You're the closest folks we have to the actual projects in the neighborhood, which provides us with an invaluable insight in terms of what's best for the neighborhood. You live in these areas. You know better than we do sometimes what fits in there. We take your uh, recommendations seriously. Sometimes they do not always get approved, and we should make some changes because we have uh, circumstances that we have to look at that sometimes you don't address. So we've got different commissioners that view things differently. But I appreciate it. We've got almost 100 people here today that are uh, willing to do this. And I commend anyone who's willing to take the time to commit themselves to public service. You are subject to the open meeting law, and you're going to get a lot of information presented to you today. It's like water coming out of a fire hydrant. You won't be able to take it all in. So what Alex told you, you might want to go back and look at the videotape if there's something that you miss. The open lead meeting law does govern town boards. It governs planning commissions and certainly county commission meetings. So it's important that you're familiar with it and communication with individuals and whatnot and that you don't all just get together and have a cup of coffee and start talking about different items that are on the town board agendas. So before I get to the oath of office, is there, are there any questions out there that someone has that they'd like to ask? I knew I'd get a question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I warned you. Oh, you warned me. Uh, we, we had something that, that, that came up uh, near the end of the year, and it was for uh, 29 homes. And the staff report was against uh, eight parts of this whole thing. And it, it, we voted 5-0 uh, against it. It went 6-0 uh, with the Planning Commission. Four, it went before the uh, County Commission, and it passed. And it just seems like when things are, uh, the land use plan said one, uh, one home per two acre, uh, zoning one home per two acres, and then this is 29 homes on, I think it was uh, 22 acres. And then it passes every day. It just seems to me that somewhere between uh, our meeting where there was issues about uh, water, uh, Las Vegas Valley water was a mile and a half away, uh, wells they weren't going to be able to get it for uh, half acres, there was the Blue Diamond Water Co-op where they said that they couldn't guarantee water. There were so many parts of it that it seems that the local people knew more about it. And when it goes to the Planning Commission, Hopefully all that commission can go forward to the Planning Commission and the BCC. So whether it takes, uh, uh, the, uh, in our case, the CAC to write something up, why we voted that, would that be helpful uh, to, uh, to the BCC? I, did everybody hear the comment and the question? Okay. This, well, the question relates to a, a project, and correct me if I summarize this incorrectly, that was uh, proposed up in, uh, Red, the Red Rock area off of 160, which we've got some other projects up there that are very contentious. It was denied by the town board, recommended denial, recommended denial by the planning commission, and then ultimately approved by the county commission. When we get to the county commission, just so you understand, we are not as familiar with every project in the county as we are with those in our own district. You know, we kind of acquiesce to the commission who represents that district because we hope that they acquiesce to us when it comes to our district. Oftentimes what happens in some of these situations is when it comes to the town board and you make changes, you make recommendations, the developer will come up with a new plan and they'll make some changes. Or at the planning commission, they'll make some changes to that. They'll make some commitments sometimes to the county commission 
in terms of mitigating some of the situations that you bring up, whether it relates to drainage or traffic or you know whatever it might be. Uh, and I know it's frustrating for the town boards when you, there's a recommendation for a denial or approval and it's either confirmed or upheld by the Planning Commission or overturned by the Planning Commission or by the County Commission. That's why we have three steps along the way to give everybody enough due process. The information that you provide us and the recommendations, as I can't stress enough, is invaluable. We look at it very, very seriously. We take the comments. Uh, I don't know if you can come up with a summary like that. And Alex, I'd ask when Steve gets here from the DA's office, what is actually, everything that you do is part of a public record that's subject to the uh, Freedom of Information Act. I don't know if that's something that could be set up to us, uh, you know, summary and, and how you would get together. The town board might not agree on exactly how that should be worded, what the verbiage should be. So that would be a question. Would it be helpful? Absolutely. Usually I go to Tiffany, to my liaison, who's ever handling that, and sometimes I'll ask a question in terms of how you arrived at that decision. Uh, but I think that's better served when, I think Steve Swiker is coming for this meeting. To, oh, there you okay. To, uh, you're so quiet down there. Uh, to answer that question, whether or not that's appropriate or allowable to send us up written information. Yes, sir. When they have situations like that, would it be useful if it's been denied at the Planning Commission, um, as, I mean, at the county uh, town board as well as at the Planning Commission, and those changes that you suspect could have occurred that would have mitigated those circumstances, for it to go back to the town board so that the town board could be familiar with the things that maybe would change their mind and they wouldn't resent it as much? That's possible. And sometimes we do send it back. On occasion, I have sent a couple back. The difficult part with that is this is a very time-consuming process to go through, you know, the town board, then the planning commission. And quite frankly, neighbors sometimes get a little annoyed, you know, that it's put on agenda and then it gets held by a developer and then gets held another time and they come two or three times and it goes to planning commission and gets held once or twice, a county commission and these things can take three, four, five, six months. And if it's sent back another time, that can happen. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. That's pretty much up to the purview of the individual commissioner who represents that district, whether or not he or she chooses to send it back. But we do try to address what your concerns are. So a commissioner will say, Look, this issue came up about drainage. How did you address that? Or, you know, how are you going to handle that? And we hope, to, hopefully, we address the issues that you do raise. And sometimes we miss them, but we do the best we can. Yes, Commissioner, I know, um, I know we're standardizing a lot of the boards, but I will say, you know, since 2000, as I've sat on the, the board there in Laughlin, we've always had, and I think Tammy's here today. Um, they give the recommendations in a copy of the minutes. And then also after, in the next meeting that we have the following month, we have notices of final action. And there's been several times where anything that has changed has come back to us and we've been briefed on that by staff. And so I know that that happens at least at Laughlin. Um, so as we're trying to standardize, that could be something that, uh, because you can always go online. A lot of times things that are, are real crucial to Laughlin, we followed. Mm -hmm. um, and the notices of final action, you could go back and read through that as well. And I appreciate that we have sent, Tiffany and I have sent some things back when it's like, okay, wait a minute, this Tom Moore doesn't like it, take it back, make it a change and take it back. I think what we're talking about here, what's being, I don't know if you can quantify or codify the thought process that got you to where your recommendations were, and that's something that Steve's going to have to address because you've got five different thought processes that, made the recommendation as to yes or no. You put more weight on some testimony than on others, but we try to send it back, you know, if we think it's necessary. And if you want more of that, sending it back, uh, let us know. And, you know, we'll work that through the liaisons, the various liaisons, and I'll make the uh, comment to my colleagues that you'd prefer we try to send some of the more controversial stuff back to you. But we are aware of the time frame that's situated with this. I mean, some of these projects take a long time, and I hear it from neighbors on a regular basis like, geez, how many times does this take? You know, it was denied at the town board, and they held it, and then it was denied, and then it came to the planning commission, they held it twice, and it was denied, and then they appealed at the county commission, they've held it three times, and I'm taking off work, and you know, then it just, and there's a frustration on behalf of the neighbors as well, so sometimes we want to just get something moving, so we try to, it's a delicate balance. Oh, in the same way that the town 
board did that the town board could be notified so that we could also show up for that meeting. If we're giving an advisory and we're assuming that it's going to pass and we're representing the neighborhoods, if the neighbors came and we voted to deny it and the neighbors would take the opinion that that was a done deal, then I think the town board should have an option to attend that meeting to at least mm -hmm. represent the the difficult part is, in my case, you don't know if you're going to deny it or recommend approval as a county commissioner until you oftentimes will meet with both sides of an issue. They'll come in or the developer and the property owner will come in and, you know, make their case and we'll address the things. I'll sit and work with staff and staff is our comp planning staff and public works staff is you're going to meet some today is unbelievably incredible. I mean, they have such grasp of the situation and the knowledge that they bring forward to us and sometimes they can come up with a potential solution i don't know if the commissioner can contact the town board members because quite frankly i don't know if they're going to know until it actually uh comes before the county commission and sometimes neighbors that hadn't appeared at the town board or the uh, planning commission meeting will appear and they'll bring up issues that previously weren't addressed but that and i'm not meaning to shuffle off the questions that's another one that i think you should ask legal when they get to speak in terms of when it's appropriate, not appropriate for the town board to come in and uh, speak also lobbying in front of the county commission. Right. And that, that's, that's my biggest complaint. As far as the neighbors who come to my house after we've denied something and it's got passed, yeah. they show up at my door. You know, I'm, I'm familiar with that happening. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you show up the door of the gas station, the dry cleaner, the restaurant. I get that regularly. Exactly. Regularly that happens to me. Any other quick questions? Yes, sir. Um, in Moapa, we feel like um, the, my constituents that feel like we're very, very different from the Las Vegas Valley. And that it's different opinions on a lot of things. The reason people move out there mm -hmm. is because it is different. And yet, we're forced to kind of fit the round peg into a square hole a lot of times with, with county rules and and they end up it. And that's a very good point. Some of the rural areas, whether it's Moapa, Moapa Valley, Bunkerville, Good Springs, Laughlin, Searchlight, you know, when we get out a little bit, it is different than Enterprise and, you know, Sunrise, and, you know, Spring Valley. People do live there for different areas, just like RNPs are different than living in a non RNP. We try to take those things into account. I mean, there's a lot that's allowed in some of the rurals that's not allowed in, you know, the urban core of the county. Uh, the commissioners and our liaisons, and again, not to just keep throwing out accolades, we've got a group of incredible liaisons that handle this stuff for us. They are aware, contact them if you have a specific issue. They're familiar with the rural atmosphere and flavor of some of our uh, commission districts. And we all have a touch of some of the rural areas and some of the urban areas. Particularly, I know Commissioner Kirkpatrick and Brager and myself have a lot more that goes further out into some of the outlying areas. And you're right, sometimes that does feel like you're fitting a uh, square peg in a round hole. But as commissioners, we're well aware of the intricacies and the difference between, you know, Moapa Valley and uh, Tropicana and Pecos. You know, we're, we're well familiar with that. And, you know, it's not always a one solution fits all. So we appreciate the, the work that you do to try to bring it together. And the lifestyle is different, just like code enforcement is different out there than it is in the urban core. Anything else? OK, because I'm going to get you way behind on your schedule, and I don't want to do that. I can see Alex out of the corner of my eye here. So you, so, you have, if, um, if nobody, if anybody hasn't gotten their um, ethics notarized, the notaries are still out there, but they're ready to start their to leave. Did anybody not get their ethics thing notarized? Everybody's, you need to? OK, we've got one before they leave. Two? Want to get those done before I swear them in or after I swear them in? Okay. I'm going to swear you in and then I'm going to ask the two to go out and have those notarized, okay? Does everybody have the oath of office paper? Okay, you don't have it? Oh, okay. Good. Well, I'm going, to re I'm going to give you the verbiage, and then you will repeat after me, and I'll make them. I had to do this on Tuesday for my oath, so I'll try to make them short sentences. 
if I could ask everyone to please rise and raise your right hand. There's two parts where you're gonna to have to state your name or the town board or citizens advisory council that you represent, and I will point those out to you. I, state your name. I, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, protect, and defend. That I will support, protect, and defend. The Constitution and government. The Constitution and government. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution and government of the state of Nevada, of the state of Nevada. Against, all against all enemies, whether domestic or foreign, whether domestic or foreign. and that will, will bear true faith, allegiance and loyalty to the same. To the same. Any, ordinance, any ordinance, resolution or law, resolution or law of, any state notwithstanding. of any state notwithstanding, and that I will well and faithfully, perform and faithfully perform all the duties of the office of, all the duties of, the office of state your town board or citizens advisory council, citizens advisory council. On, which on which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, you are now officially sworn in. <laughs> okay, Alex, you want your microphone back? Yes, no, okay. but I will take thank it. You. Thank you. Again, thank you all much. It's a pleasure to be here. I enjoy seeing everybody, and I cannot commend you and thank you enough. It's uh, Saturday morning at 9 o'clock in the morning, and there's a lot of other things that you could be doing, that anyone could be doing on a Saturday morning, including sleeping. But the fact that you took the time to get involved and to be here for this shows an awful lot about not just what you do, but about who you are. You help make our community better. You help all the citizens here to form a, a structure that you know they can understand and that we can follow as a commission. And I thank you for your willingness to serve and your time. So thank you all. Have a great day. We appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you.